Hello everyone, my name is Matt and welcome to Cardio Visual. I'm your host with the mostest, so let's get into this cardiac patient scenario. So you have a 36 year old male with a chief complaint of chest pain and a fever. He has no medical history. So what would you like to know about this patient? Well, let's get some vitals on them. So his blood pressure looks better than mine at 100 over 62. Heart rate is rapid and strong. O2 sad is 100% on room air. And do you guys want an EKG for this EKG scenario? Well, I would, so here we go. So here is the, his EKG. What I want you to do is pause the video now and try to come up with your own kind of interpretation. So let's break it down a little bit. First off, we can see the heart rate is about 150 beats per minute if we use the big box method. You can see the arrows in V3 show some kind of atrial activity as well. And in V1, you have an RSR prime, so a pseudo right bundle branch block. And in lead one, two, and three, you can see these premature beats as well, because they're occurring before the next scheduled beat, and there's no P wave associated with them. So it's probably a PJC, because they're also a narrow complex premature beat. So what do I take away from this? So this is going to be a sinus tachycardia, but there's a possibility that this could be a two to one atrial flutter due to the Bix rule. The Bix rule means that if there's atrial activity halfway between two QRS complexes, it could mean that there is atrial activity inside of each QRS as well, which would coincide with a two to one flutter. And since this patient has basically a heart rate of 150, we can possibly assume that you could do a Lewis lead if you wanted to, to confirm this. When I look throughout this, I see that there's some ST depression and some of your inferior leads and some of your V5 and V6, but there's also ST elevation V1 and V2. And you can see a little bit in AVL. I believe the ST depression in this is going to be your rate related ischemia because the patient's heart rate is going so fast. Your ST elevation in V1 and V2, which is giving you, you know, your pseudo right bundle branch block, has somewhat of a coved appearance. So this is going to be a sinus tack, possibly atrial flutter, with premature beats, a pseudo right bundle branch block, and ST elevation in V1 through V2. Those are our key points that we notice here. So what do we think this is? Why do we have ST elevation in V1 and in V2? So Brugada. You have Brugada pattern and Brugada syndrome. Brugada syndrome is an inheritable autosomal dominant gene mutation of the SCN5A gene, which is the most common, which can cause sudden cardiac arrest. This gene mutation results in the loss of sodium channel function and action potentials of the epicardial cells located near your right ventricular outflow tract. This creates a transmural voltage gradient, which gives rise to the EKG findings. Some clinical features to look out for is nocturnal agonal respirations, dysrhythmias occurring more often at night, palpitations, and syncope. Your Brugada pattern is typical EKG findings without any symptoms or clinical criteria. Brugada syndrome is your typical EKG findings along with patients who are symptomatic and have one or more clinical criteria. Right here you can see that there's three types of Brugada. Some places teach three. There's some studies that combine two and three together, but at the end of the day, none of that really matters. Just know that type one is the most diagnostic. That's gonna be your coved ST elevation in V1 to V3, most commonly seen in V1 and V2. You're gonna have a pseudo right bundle branch block, that's your RSR prime, and you're gonna have terminal T wave inversions. It is important to know that the EKG finding can be transient and provoked by fevers or certain kind of medications. This patient just had Brugada pattern, it was induced by his fever, he did not actually have the syndrome. And that's gonna wrap it up for this week's video. I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope you guys have a great day.